Hey there, I'm Virgola, and you're listening to A Pop in the Life, Pod Fashions of a Founder's Pop. In this walking podcast, I will tell you all about my life with mom, who's a startup founder, talking startups, entrepreneurship, but also other interesting topics such as mental health and a bit of fun too. Join us in this walk of life. Hello, hello, this is Virgola and this is a driving pub in the life. Yeah, I mean, mom is not actually recording while driving or yes, she is, but she's not, she's just, I mean, it's the mic who's doing that. So no worries, mommy's safe, we are all safe. And um, this is, this is what it is, just random thoughts uh, while, while driving. So actually not so random because there is a couple of things that happen in the past couple of days that mom found very, 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 very interesting when it comes to uh, startup valuation and um, and in general, the way that uh, founders uh, approach uh, valuations and economics in their startups, um, as if uh, we compare them to, um, you know, actual like real businesses that are not startups and uh, to VCs as well. So. What happens is that when she get asked for valuation, uh, especially in the early days, it is very hard for you to just, uh, you know, explain what the valuation is all about, um, especially if you haven't studied economics. So let me explain you if you haven't heard about this. If you have, please uh, just uh, move on to the minute two and 30 or something like that. So basically, the valuation is the amount of money for which you were willing, in theory, to be trading your business um, with 100% of shares. So imagine that you own 100% of the business and we say that on the market your business can be sold for 1 million euros. And 1 million euros is the amount of money you should get if your um, if, if your company is valued at 1 million and you're willing to sell it. So there are different ways of approaching this. There are different, this is the ideal scenario where everything is very clear, everything is evident, everything is very, you know, basically very, very, very easy to do, uh, but it's not. It's actually never like this. Uh, why? Because, for example, shares are split, so you, you're not, if you're not a solo founder, you are sharing your shares with other people, so basically if you sell it a million and you have 50%, you're going to get half a million. And then when it comes to VC funds as well, is that they also have their stake and usually they have liquidation preference, which means in many cases that if you sell the company, they get the money in first. So, well, it, it's a bit complicated, but we don't want to get into that. So basically, uh, why is this number very important? Because this number is the number that tells you uh, for how much money, uh, how much money you can raise, and which equity uh, you are willing to give up. So imagine that you value your company at I don't know a million euros right now, and you're gonna give out, um, you're gonna ask for uh, 250k. You know, uh, so your pre-money valuation is gonna be called one million, and your post-money valuation is gonna be um, a million uh, two hundred a million point. Time. Ah, a million point two five. Sorry, uh, English is not my first language, so yeah. So you make the, the, the calculation for yourself. The way you approach the percentage is a classic percentage um, with, with the hundred as basis number. Uh, that's why we keep a million as a very easy number for that. Uh, and so you can also understand what, why this number is important because you then approach the valuation as something that you are willing to give up in your company. So imagine that somebody would offer you with a company that's valued, I don't know, 100, uh, 1 million euros and they're going to offer you uh, 600k. Uh, if you own a startup, you probably won't accept them in the first place. In theory, uh, all things equal. Why? Because you're going to give up control of your company. Way too much control, the majority of the stakes. So. There is a, uh, a balance between how much a VC is willing to, to give you uh, for money and how much you are willing to give up and also the money that you need to do so. So the problem with this is that uh, how do you balance it? You balance through a thing called valuation and you balance it through valuation because this number uh, is the actual 
uh, perceived truth and accepted truth between two parties of the actual uh, business. Um, and there, usually the valuation is set uh, in a negotiation from with the founder uh, to uh, the lead investor that's leading the, uh, the, the, the investment, which means the person that's giving you the most money and is dictating the conditions. Um, and usually needs to be accepted by followers. So any angel investor you have and any follower investor, uh, even in VC, you got. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, why don't you tell your human to share it on their social media? You actually can also tag us and let them put a picture with you, your animal friend, or just them listening to the podcast with their thoughts. I hope to see you again around and let's just continue listening while we make the podcast grow and I get some new animal friends. Now, let's get back to the show. So why are we talking about this and why is this important? Because usually founders have no idea how to estimate valuations. So you have two options here if you're a founder. Either you estimate it yourself or you go ask a very pricey um, consultancy firm to do it for you. Well, usually option number two is not something that is available to most startups. And so you need to go with option number one. So you need to get educated on that. And so we got a couple of, of feedback piece of feedback, a couple of calls lately uh, with mom and with uh, potential, well, not actually investors, not only investors, but also advisors. Um, And we were talking, I just, you know, overheard them talk about valuation and and there was something very interesting, uh, very interesting about it. So valuation is not only everything that we covered. So basically you have a perceived um, valuation for yourself. willing to have valuation um, that also needs to be matched with investors the problem with that is that investors and you as well don't want to give out too much of your equity of course but you also don't want to be don't want to price the valuation too high because what happens in the next round if you need to raise more money and you're not able to sustain that to sustain a valuation that's even a bit higher than the one that you had before well you're fucked and the same goes for VCs, especially if they want to do follow on on your round. So it's a negotiation thing. And trust me, nobody gains if the valuation is too high and nobody gains if the valuation is too low, especially if you're talking with uh, great investors, if you're talking with bullshit investors, well, it happens that you want to just keep the valuation. Anyways, the thing is, what you need to keep in mind is that valuation is usually a multiple of something, whether it's the revenue or it's the EBITDA. Usually in early stage startup, it's usually the revenue. But what is the problem with that? That if you create a multiple of your valuation, it, provided you're making revenue, because if you're not making revenue, that also the valuation just may pretend uh, through market valuation that's um, you know accepted in, in, in the world, in, in the market you're, you're, you're operating in. Um, the problem with that is that if you accept a valuation that is a valuation on your revenue, imagine you make 200K in run rate. Run rate is the monthly recurring revenue, especially for SaaS business, that's the one that mom is working at, the money you make in a month, and you multiply it for uh, times 12, which is the actual thing that's called annual run rate. So basically the money you get in every year um, recurring, and you get something around a valuation of 1.6, 1.7 million which is very low if uh, with, with have that type of revenue number. So how does everything happen? Well, it happens at the valuation that you need to explain to investors and the, what investors expect to hear, especially the ones that are very prepared, is the valuation that's about your future self. I don't care as a VC, what are you doing right now? I want to care about what you plan to do next. It's called venture capital. It's not private equity. It's something that relates to risk. It relates to uh, to the potential of the market rather than the traction you already demonstrated, especially in the early stage. We're not talking big money here in later stages and growth stages. So. Um, this is mainly the shift that founders need to make. And so mom had a call with this guy, uh, actually for listening, thank you so much. Um, and, and, and he just explained how founders need to shift their mentality also in the pitch deck. Um, 
once they start understanding this and that's what VCs want to hear but also what your colleagues as a founder and your co-founders want to hear as well because they want to know vision they want to know how do we get there they don't they don't care so much about what we built yes you can be grateful we can be happy we can be very content with what we we created but it's not the reason why you are raising money so he said explain that you need money to just um work on your sales pipeline the best it's not that you need more deals which is also something that that's a mistake that most um not not very well experienced investors make just asking for more deals more more things coming in cac lowers which which is fine but it's not the only thing that matters is how you work through that pipeline and so ask yourself this question if i were able to answer to the full the, all the requests of my pipeline what would my revenue my monthly revenue look like if it's 5k right now would it look like 20 would it look like 50 would it look like 100 well that is the number you need to explain and the number you need to have as a basis this needs to be a credible basis for your analysis in the valuation of things and so this is the first thing then ask yourself what is your target customer and what is who will be your target customer in the near future and what will your target customer be in the far future there are three different types of people usually in the first one you usually demonstrated something at least a bit of traction even in precede you created i don't know wait lists you created um surveys you create many things that are useful to show that there is an actual interest um what then you can ask about you know the, the near future well i hope to get to, to that those customers but to do in order to do so i need to add x y and z features and in order to go to my future future customers so the second um the, the second ones not the first ones so the far future let's say i will need to build a b and c and d and e and f and g and h and i and j and k and l and m and o p features okay so that is also something interesting a product roadmap which is not something that you actually um it's not actually just a product roadmap it's also a product roadmap that it's connected to the market you are targeting um so this is the these are the two main things that that you need to do and so you need to really show the difference between what you're doing now and show conviction for what you're going to build out later so basically the ability of just explaining to people and to VCs that you have a fucking plan because that's what people in general most care about even when you're hiring who wants to go to a company that doesn't have a plan if the company doesn't have a plan for herself do you think they have a plan for you well no chances are they don't and so the same goes for VCs well then you have all the classical pitch deck slides just like how the product works how the user journey works um really just make them understand how the market works is a pretty fucking big market um to tackle and why you are the right team to do so um the other thing i want to mention is an interview that i overheard mom listening to from a guy who actually founded a pretty big company in italy uh, that that sells b2b services as a saas and actually the founder and what not um interesting uh, interesting type of interview there was only one thing that stood out very 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 much uh, for mom which was that the guy literally said that they are reverse engineering they're only re- just reverse engineering the process to get to 12 million users okay 12 million users that is a number he didn't made up probably on objectives he he put on her, on himself he knows he can get to some type of valuation if he does that and blah 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 so basically this is the reasoning you need to have behind you and this is the actual thing you need to understand uh, if you think about uh, approaching company and so in the scheme of things that we were talking about uh, Max program and you know her uh, concern about you know building stuff and having time to create things well this is something that's also part of the program as well but that's also part of the CEO's job and i and i would say you probably as a CEO and as a founder as an entrepreneur you need to spend as a C level also entrepreneur you need to spend way more time just doing this type of stuff um rather than you know doing tactical things to 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 work i mean it's, the work is work and needs to to be done um as as alex formosi says 
the works ne the work needs doing which is which is real but you also need to think about strategy and this is the exact strategy you need to have as a CEO as a CFO in a company even sometimes as a CEO to really understand how to outline processes um, you need to have it as out of sales as out of marketing I mean it is important and this is the thing that's most interesting when it's also comes to talk with investors so imagine you plan to sell your company for I don't know a hundred million and you know that your multiple is for example um, I don't know 10x okay so you expect that you need to make 10 million okay 10 million every year in sales because then your multiple can be 10x and I'm just making up numbers and it's gonna be a hundred million in valuation okay so what do you need to do to get to those 10 million in in revenue a year well there is a lot of things that we can do we can just reverse engineer ads we can reverse engineer hiring we can reverse engineer uh, the, the, the amount of funding but the real thing is that once you understand roughly the evolution of your pricing and the evolution of your offer into the world and for your freaking market you know how much of those 10 million is a part of the actual market that you're gonna go to and exactly what you need how many people you need to sell to get to those numbers also the last thing he said was also the former guy not not the not the reverse engineering one you need to have a plan in order for you to show retention if you're not able to show retention show that people are actually fucking using your thing um, so this is it this is a tiny lesson on valuation that we keep learning uh, day in and day out as founders. I hope somebody out there just find, finds it useful. I'm sorry for the most, the more, I would say, uh, numberish um, episode for those of you who listen for another reason. Um, but this is also a part of life, and especially of the life as a founder and an entrepreneur. Then we can also say that it's also a part of the life in general of anybody who wants to fucking build something if you don't know where you're going you better not go there so this is what it is i hope to see you around again tomorrow please don't go away because of this episode but if you like it if you need some if you if you think that somebody might need it um as a friend as a colleague as a uh, fellow founder please share it with them uh this is a small community but we keep growing um I will send you kisses, hugs, and a bit of barks, and see you tomorrow. We keep driving. Ciao! Hey, it was great to walk with you today. I hope to see you again around soon. By the way, in the meantime, you can find me on mom's social media. If you look for Marta Basso, which is M-A-R-T-A, B A double S. Oh, yes, it's Marta without an H. Just find us, send us a like, a comment, a message, reshare the episode if you liked it. I will send you all my hugs and kisses and a bit of barks as well. Listen, oh, sorry, walk with you next episode. Bye!